Tom here from Warren Systems, and I'm wearing my 45 Drive shirt because I want to talk about 45 Drives. Very specifically, a project we did in November of 2021, which was the Stornator XL60 petabyte project. Now, I'll leave a link to the video I did where I reviewed the Stornator itself, because, you know, people are curious what a 60 base server looks like and why 45 Drives was the choice. And... This is the follow-up to that to say that 45 Drives was a great choice because here we are in June of 2022 and the project has gone really well. The client has loaded up quite a bit of data. Now, let me give you an overview of how this works. This company that I cannot name, but is a pretty large brand and they have a data problem, but they did not want to use the normal I would say off the shelf solutions a lot of people may propose for this. So they contacted us. This is where we work a lot with internal ID teams to provide a solution like this. They wanted a large storage server, 45 drives. They did not need high availability, 100% 999 of uptime uh, with a complete failover because basically they have lots of data to process and they just need it stored somewhere. And if for some reason the server were to have a failure, it does have redundant power supplies as you may have watched from the video on that, but it doesn't have redundant motherboards or some of the high availability features because that's not necessary for what they're doing. They have all this data that comes out of their lab. Then they have a series of compute modules, essentially, a whole bunch of computers that are all connected at 10 gig to it to process said data sets. Now, the Stornator itself has a 25 gig connection and we built this out by putting it in two racks with a connection between them. And then yes, we did use a Unify aggregation switch so we can connect the Stornator at 25 gigs and connect all the compute modules at 10 gig and it's been working well. Now they only have right now about 200 terabytes of data. Uh, we were thinking and so were they that they might fill it up a little bit faster, but here we are. And the follow-up we did with them was just to make sure everything's working and they do need a few more switches uh, for another project that we're going to be working with them on. But one of the important things I wanted to talk about though is that the system works well. We loaded TrueNAS on this. We had no issues with it and the client is still happy. I think this is an important thing I try to bring on my channel is talking about the solutions that we provide, but then following up, did, did those solutions provide what they were supposed to? And that's just really key when you're thinking about the projects long-term, because it's hard to find a lot of good information of will this work until you start doing it. But then people who are doing it don't always come back and share whether or not the solution worked seven or eight months later. But I want to talk real quick about how we priced it, because I know that's going to be a common question. How do you price a petabyte of storage? And we're going to jump over to 45 Drive site for that. And this is one of the reasons they make it easy to provide as a solution. Here's your Stornator XL60. Please note, I'm not logged into anything special on the site. We're just going to go click the build button and start pricing it out. Choose the color. You know, if that matters, upload your own custom logo. Yes, we did that for the client. Unfortunately, I had to put tape over it because we can't see the name of the client. Choose your operating system. Choose where you're shipping it to. Hit next. Choose memory, the particular one we built. We had 256 gigs. We also use the Intel Xeon 4216, 16 core, 32 thread processor. Epic was pretty new at the time, but yes, they do offer Epic systems on here. So scroll down. We have a dual 25 gig network card in there. Just one. That's fine for that. This is the important part is the drives. And at the time, 18 terabytes were the most available. I don't remember that the 20 were well in stock. It's not as much about availability. And how many do we put in? 60 of them. Which does add a little bit to the price. You got about $25,000 worth of drives. Scroll down, next. And warranty, go for the three-year warranty on there. We don't really need any configuration because we were the OEM on this and did all the integration. Application support, same thing. We did all the application support and configuration. And now you have a price, $44,000 to get a petabyte of storage. So now you know how much it costs, but let's talk about one more detail of running TrueNAS on there. Lots of people were saying, why didn't you make it a Ceph cluster? Why would we make it a Ceph cluster? That would only add a layer of complexity to it. People ask a lot about different storage types. And you want to start with, because when it comes down to support, you want to be able to support it, the simplest possible that will solve the solution. So we built this out. They're literally just using SMB shares. Because there's not a whole lot of users tied to this, it's not even tied to Active Directory because it doesn't need to be. It is a lab that does 
we'll just say scientific data processing and the compute modules talk to the server with the same user because they're all doing the same project. The data comes in from the other side where they actually gather the data in another lab and push it across the 25 gig connections to fill it up. And that's really it. It's that simple. Adding extra layers on that would only add to the complexity of things like updates and you don't want complexity in environments. You want higher availability. As you add complexity to things like that, the software update process could possibly go wrong. It's not that there's not ever a need for clustered storage solutions like Ceph or Gluster or any of those. It's just about doing it in the most simple way that gets the job done and no more complicated than that. There are times you want to make things more complicated depending on the needs, but for this particular need, there is not. And the fact that they've only got 200 terabytes used so far, they are going to extend a life a little bit longer before they need another one to do more processing. Um, and if they're doing archival things, once they process all the larger data, it breaks it down to smaller data sets. So there's a lot of other factors in there, but none of it required that extra layers of complexity. Now, the last thing I want to do is talk about 45 drives themselves, and please take some time to check out their YouTube channel, which is linked in the description below. Give it some love because they put out a lot of great information on ZFS, on storage solutions. They are some storage experts. I've worked with their team on other projects and uh, we continue to love working with them as a solution provider for storage. They have just a wide array of options, not just running TrueNAS. I've covered before their Houston OS, and I'll leave a link to that video as well. But check out their site where they talk about it because they dive deep into the questions people ask, especially about things like Ceph and clustered storage are experts on that. So when a petabyte's not enough and you need something substantially larger, you need it clustered across several racks of data uh, storage units, then yeah, 45 Drives has a couple of videos on that topic where you can dive into it. So the project went well. This is kind of just a follow-up to say, yes, it works. This is how we deployed it. This was a follow-up from the customer. I just got an email from them two days ago. That's why I'm doing this video. But I also want to just kind of talk about this as a solution in case some of you are curious. Does it work? Does it hold up? Did you have any problems? We've had no power supply failures, motherboard failures, or anything like that. And if you're curious, I also have a 45 drive server that all of my video editing and storage is done on. And well, it's actually pretty diversely used in my office for things like all of our backups and all of our main storage for things that of course is replicated to other servers. So if you're interested, I will be doing a video soon on following up with my smaller 45 drive server. We didn't quite need a petabyte of storage at my office, but hey, we still got quite a bit of data on there. I'll leave a link to the video where I reviewed that. And uh, we're definitely putting that thing to excellent use because it runs a whole lot of virtual machines uh, as a storage target for our virtualization as well, our lab and our production stuff. Nonetheless, Leave links to things I talked about down below. Head over to 45 Drives to learn a whole lot more about them and uh, check out their YouTube channel. And man, there's just a lot of knowledge to be had uh, watching their videos on stuff. I learn stuff every time I talk to them or every time I watch one of their videos as well. All right, thanks. And thank you for making it all the way to the end of this video. If you've enjoyed the content, please give us a thumbs up. If you would like to see more content from this channel, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon. If you'd like to hire a short project, head over to lawrencesystems.com and click the Hire Us button right at the top. To help this channel out in other ways, there's a Join button here for YouTube and a Patreon page where your support is greatly appreciated. For deals, discounts, and offers, check out our affiliate links in the description of all of our videos, including a link to our shirt store where we have a wide variety of shirts that we sell and designs come out, well, randomly, so check back frequently. And finally, our forums. Forums.lawrencesystems.com is where you can have a more in-depth discussion about this video and other tech topics covered on this channel. Thanks again for watching and look forward to hearing from you.